Good afternoon, hockey fans. My name is Matt. This is my hockey channel, but enough with all this introductory crap. I just read a report that Cam Talbot of the Edmonton Oilers got traded to the Philadelphia Flyers for Anthony Stolarts. Now, you may have already realized when you click this video, man, this video sucks. It's not in HD, the colors are off, you know, the audio isn't very clear. The guy that's speaking kind of looks like a drunk, hungover Max Pacioretty. And you know what I say to that? You're absolutely right. But I can give you one thing. Good, in-depth hockey analysis. And if I were to analyze this trade, the first thing I do, before even thinking about how good the players are on ice, the first thing I do is look at the age. So, as I alluded to previously, this is a one-for-one one trade. No other players involved. And we got Cam Talbot, who was with the Oilers. He's 31 years old. Anthony Stolarts is 25 years old. You know? So, without even talking about their hockey, their hockey play, their talent, when it comes to age, and age alone, the Edmonton Oilers won this trade. Now let me get into the other stuff because I don't think the Oilers won this, but let me get into the other stuff. So I talked about age. Now let's look at the statistics. So here we have Stolarts. I'm looking at his DB page. He has a goals against average of 3.33. That is, um, pardon my French, shit. You cannot be allowing 3.33 goals per game. Now, that being said, uh, the, 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 the Philadelphia Flyers aren't the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's not a great defense. It's not a great team overall. You're going to be allowing more goals. And who knows, maybe a chain of scenery that will benefit Stolarts. And mind you, he's only played 12 games, so it's not the biggest sample size. Back to Cameron Talbot. He has a goals against average of 3.36, a save percentage of 0.893. This is horrible. Uh, that is not what you want from a number one goalie. And as a matter of fact, he wasn't even the number one goalie this year. The other kid, Kostinen, uh, dethroned him, and he seems to be playing uh, more games. Talbot's career has gone down since the 2016-2017 season. In fact, last year, I drafted Talbot with my number two overall pick in my hockey league, in my fantasy league, and that bit me in the hairy ass because he couldn't win a game to save his life. Similarly to Stolarts, though, a goalie, how good a goalie is, is reflected upon how good the team is. And the Edmonton Oilers aren't the Tampa Bay Lightning. So that save percentage, that goals against average, is skewed. And he might benefit from a change of scenery. He might be better on another team. Who knows? Goalies are weird in this league. They're unpredictable. Now, let me go in a few intangibles. So I was listening to Elliot Friedman talking on the NHL Network. And one thing I didn't know, but Carter Hart and Cam Talbot are really good friends off the ice. In fact, they train together, they're friends, and little known fact, uh, on Cam Talbot, uh, sorry, on uh, Carter Hart's first game, he actually called Cam Talbot for some advice. Now that they're on the same team, he could save money on his phone bill, he won't even need to call him. He could just go across the locker room, say, hey Cam, do you have any advice for this? And it's for that reason, I think Cam Talbot will make the ideal backup to Carter Hart, who, by the way, is one of the brightest uh, goalie prospects in the league. I think Carter Hart's going to be a fantastic goalie. And ever since I've watched him play on the World Juniors for Team Canada, I said, this kid's got it. And I'll admit, I was a little afraid because we all know Philadelphia. It's a graveyard for goalies. They haven't had a... a they haven't had a number one goalie since my ass was hairless. It's not the best place for a goalie. But Carter Hart 
seems, and I repeat because it's still a small sample size, seems to be thriving in this type of market. And having Cam Tablet as a backup goaler can only solidify it. Now, on the other hand, Stolarts. I don't know much about the kid, so I won't pretend like I do. He's been playing with the Lee Valley Phantoms, the uh, AHL team of the Flyers, and his numbers weren't great with them. He had a game earlier this year where I think they played the Rangers, and he played out of his mind, and the Flyers, in fact, ended up winning 1-0, and he stood on his head, okay? But that's one game. Will he be able to reproduce it in Edmonton on a team that I, myself, deem as worse than the Philadelphia Flyers? I personally don't think so. And while I don't really like talking about trades like this because they're not really high stakes, you know, but if I were to declare a winner, I would say the Philadelphia Flyers won because over there in Edmonton, I love my Oilers, you know, I shouldn't say my Oilers, it's not my favorite team, but I love the Oilers. Uh, they're a Canadian team. They have a rich history. But uh, what Chiarelli's done there, he made an oil spill. You'd think the uh, Exxon Valdez was there with all the oil spill. So for that reason, I think the Philadelphia Flyers won this trade. So please like and subscribe. I'll be making more videos like this in the future especially with the trade deadline ahead. And I'll be talking about any kind of hockey information, any kind of news, any kind of trades, anything. And if you want more videos such as this, who knows, maybe in the future I could get a microphone, I could get a webcam video machine, who knows? So please like and subscribe.